Hey everyone, Zach Mason here. Hey, I've had an amazing insight uh, on the Dana Coverstone calendar dreams provided to me by one of you. If uh, you're not familiar with that, go watch first. This video is not going to make any sense to you. Uh, go watch a video I posted about three videos before this called an amplified interpretation of the calendar dream. A lot of you have watched that and gotten a lot of benefit out of it. Um, Dana Coverstone is a pastor who's had a lot of prophetic dreams that we believe are from God. And in that other video, uh, I actually have another video where I explain in detail, logically, why I believe uh, Dana Coverstone's dreams are probably from God and that he is warning us to them. As well, he's also warning many other Christians to dreams, but Dana Coverstone seem especially powerful. The calendar dream in particular is the main one that got everybody's attention because it was attached to a calendar and it showed some very... Uh, impactful things predicted for the United States for our future. So it got a lot of people's attention. But the main criticism leveled at Dana Coverstone was that in this dream, you see a hand taps the month of March 2020 three times, then taps June three times, then taps September three times, then underlines November three times, extra emphasis, and then a fist punches the month of November and destroys the calendar. Now, um, the main criticism leveled at Coverstone, although he never claimed to be a prophet, he's just reporting a dream, is that the fist didn't punch the calendar in November of 2020. And um, I argued in my interpretation that we're missing the template because in the template, the hand is showing emphasis. It's emphasizing those months. It's telling us those months or those certain dates are important. And we need to look at what is starting in those months. And I point out that in each of those months, a new point of division was ex exacerbated or began, like coronavirus, Black Lives Matter, etc. The election uh, of 2020 was a major source of division. And I argued that we're missing the template, that God is emphasizing with the hand the months that they, these things begin, but that the images, all the events that Dana Coverstone saw taking place after that would take place in order over a number of years. And that they wouldn't take place just in that month. And I think that I am right on that. And that's clear. However, one of you, a viewer named D, had an amazing insight. I think she may be right. So it was, a, it was important enough I want to share it here. She basically pointed out, she said, I thought that maybe the three taps on March 2020 actually meant three marches. And the three taps on June meant three Junes and et cetera, three Septembers, three Novembers. So that, now I do believe that the election of 2020 with the Trump-Biden election was a fist punch. I don't believe that we can recover from that, that it's eventually going to cause the unraveling of the country. And I'll ex explain that a little bit now uh, in just a second. But this November, would be the third November. We had November 2020, November 2021, and November 2022. And November 2022 is the midterms. And we did have a very explosive March of this year as well. I'm, I'm starting to do a little research to look back at headlines, see if anything's significant. I already talked about what happened in March, June, and September of 2020. I've been doing a little research to see if anything uh, uh, significant happened in those months of 2021, what I did find was a lot of uh, spikes of violence in uh, cities in those months, but that's all I found so far. Regardless, is she right on her insight? I, I can't, I, we can't say absolutely. We haven't been to November 2022 yet. We haven't gotten to that point, but it makes sense to me. And the more I ask uh, myself, why did the hand tap the calendar dream, the calendar three times in that dream. Why? It could have just tapped one time. It, for, if it was just emphasizing, it could have just tapped one time. It could have tapped two times. You know, Joseph, uh, the Pharaoh's dream that, that caused Joseph to interpret a famine for Egypt was repeated twice, not three times. I think I and many others naturally interpreted three as a number of God, you know, the Trinity. It's just the sign that this is God. You know, God does things in threes. Um, so we just kind of didn't really pay attention to that detail. But Pharaoh's dreams, there was only two. And um, in the hand that wrote on the wall, um, 
in uh, Babylon, and Daniel interpreted this in Daniel 5 uh, with uh, Belshazzar. The words were many, many were the first two words. Again, they repeated twice. So for emphasis in the Bible, God usually just does twice. In fact, Jesus says, truly, truly, or verily, verily, that he's, he, I say unto you. And he always said that when he was emphasizing something. So two is what actually the Bible usually uses to emphasize things. And Coverstone said he took the hand tapping to mean emphasis. So I would expect two, actually, if I'm being biblically consistent, twice, but three times. Why three? Why not four? You know, Jesus didn't say truly, truly, truly. Uh, and the hand didn't write many, many, many. Teklu Parshim. It just wrote many, many. So I don't know. I think she may be right, though. I think she may be right. Um, it may be that the three taps and the three underlines, you know, November, underline obviously means much more significant than a tap. And I do believe this fall is going to be very significant. If you're watching the news with any closeness, you can tell that there are probably some bad things coming this fall. Let's just talk about first politically. Um, politically speaking, the midterms are scheduled for this November. And every source I've seen, including liberal sources, left-wing sources, are anticipating the Republicans sweeping the House and the Senate and taking a lot of power back because of the way the Biden administration has performed. And this is kind of universally understood. But do we believe, do we, if you stop and ask yourself, I mean, on one hand, I know if you're a conservative, if you still are thinking that your hope lies in politics, I hope you're still not thinking that. But if you did, I would just urge you to reconsider. Your hope is in the Messiah. Your hope is in Yeshua, in Jesus. He is coming back. That's the period of time we're entering into, the ushering end of the millennial kingdom. We have no hope of recovering people outside of a spiritual revival. This country has no hope without a spiritual revival. We should not be looking for politics to fix it because it's not going to. It's not going to. It really doesn't matter who wins the midterms uh, for those of us who believe and are following uh, Jesus. But the midterms for most Americans is very important. And many are hoping for justice and and uh, uh Fixes for the election system, for election integrity, uh, for Supreme Court justices to be appointed that are pro-life, for uh, the exposure of corruption. Even some are hoping for the restoration of Trump. All of these things are being hoped for by those who are anticipating the uh, the the Republicans sweeping the House and the Senate and taking back Congress, and they're expecting all kinds of investigations to be launched, etc. So they're very excited about this. Now. But here's the question. Can you imagine a scenario where the elections this fall go smoothly? Where it goes well in November? Who is going to accept the results? Because if the Republicans do take back Congress completely, what do you think the Democrats are going to say? Aren't they, have they ever been known to be, uh, you know, lawful and wanting to abide by the laws of the land and, and show restraint and grace? No, they, they, they generally tend to be much more lawless in their approach. They just, they want what they want. They have their goals and they're not going to, and they cannot stand the idea of that. And they, and they will point and there will be politicians that whip this up and then reinforce it. And they will point at all of the new election integrity laws that were passed and how that kept people away and wouldn't let people drop ballots in the ballot boxes because of COVID, because I'm sure that'll resurge about that time because they're going to try to push these ballot boxes again. And when it's not allowed, they will use that as an excuse to say Republicans stole the election. Okay. Or what if it actually goes the other way? What if, what if, um, in spite of everybody believing and knowing that the Republicans are going to sweep Congress, they don't. What if we hear 
blatant stories of election fraud again that just keeps flipping votes and and slowly over days after the election trickle you know all these new und un discovered votes start trickling in and, and favoring Democrat candidates like we saw in the ele last election. Um, that would be a blatant theft of the election. And, and I think uh, conservatives would react to that. I don't see any way it goes well. And I have uh, uh, deep down in my gut, I have this suspicion. I don't have any evidence for it, but just a suspicion. I ask myself, what if we have the midterms? What if the Republican, the GOP sweeps, like everyone's expecting, and what if there are all these protests and screams from the other side saying it was stolen, it was the election integrity laws, that uh, so-called election integrity laws, etc. And what if Biden refuses to acknowledge this? What if he uses the Department of Justice and the Federal Elections Commission in ways that Trump wasn't willing to do? What if he blatantly directs them to decertify the elections in an unlawful way? What if those in Congress refuse to recognize this as a because the Democrats do control Congress? What if Nancy Pelosi refuses to accept the results of the election claiming fraud? It's a possibility, isn't it? That would be a fist punch after the 3rd November. And I do think that as more and more news comes out that the GOP, the Republicans are going to sweep uh, in November, you're going to see the violence tick up because that's what happens. Whenever it looks like Republicans are winning, the violence comes out. Mysteriously, Antifa and Black Lives Matter, these other groups, they suddenly get funding and they start going to the streets and getting violent. And uh, as a, it's kind of an implied threat to those in Washington that if this doesn't go our way, this is going to get worse. Um, you know, it was the same kind of, we have a very similar uh, type of events happening here in this country that they did in Germany uh, before uh, you know who took power, right? Um, just look up Reichstag uh, fire, and uh, you'll see very parallels uh, to January 6th. But um, regardless, I don't want any of these things to happen. Nobody does. Um, well, some people do. I don't. Most people don't. What we want is uh, people to be happy. We want them to prosper. We want all races to prosper. We want all Americans to do well. We want our country to be in peace. But it does seem that judgment is coming, that the writing is on the wall. And this dream, D may have just had a major insight to interpreting uh, the calendar dream in a new way. So I would urge you to go back and look at it again, take this into consideration, and uh, let's give her all a round of applause, because good job, D. I had not seen that. All right, thanks, guys. I got a lot more uh, coming. In fact, I'm going to do an interpretation of a different pastor's dream, one named Chris Reed very clear dream and he had a uh, lot of headlines newspaper headlines he saw and i'm already seeing the first one about to happen so i need to go ahead and hurry up and do that dream and i also have a couple of uh, personal uh prophetic dreams to report uh so i need to uh get those recorded as well i got so many videos to do and seemingly not enough time but thank you for you guys patience and for tuning in please subscribe please share help me get the word out uh, about what we're uh, the work we're doing here. See you later.